What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm all ready for my summer vacation. Gonna be battling and fighting off my most pesky of pests, the mosquito. Are you tired of having to cover up head to toe and spraying yourself with chemicals to avoid getting hit all summer long by mosquitoes? Are you ready to try something different that will actually reduce the mosquito population at the source without having to use chemicals that may hurt you or our precious pollinators? Well, I recently scoured through multiple articles and videos by experienced entomologists and master gardeners, and I have their three most successful solutions to fight the bite and eliminate hundreds, if not thousands of mosquitoes naturally, effectively, and most importantly, efficiently. So come on in, let's have a quick hang and let's check them out. First up are the mosquito traps, also known as buckets of doom. This is the most successful method of eliminating mosquitoes at the source. This is when they're at their larval stage before they can even mature to those blood sucking adults that we all know and hate. This ultra simple DIY setup is as effective as it is inexpensive. And it really is the top method chosen by entomologists in the natural habitat preservation scene. So here are some instructions on how you get that done. All right, let's talk mosquito traps because nothing ruins a summer evening like getting eaten alive while watering your tomatoes. Here's a super effective DIY method that's cheap, easy, and kind of genius. Start with a basic bucket or two if you've got a bigger yard. The more buckets, the better the coverage. Toss in a few generous handfuls of dried organic matter. Think hay, grass clippings, or crunchy old leaves. About three to four handfuls should do the trick. Now add water about halfway up. You're going to want to aim for a ratio of one part hay to four parts water. Let that funky brew sit out in the warmth of the day for a bit. It'll start to ferment and create the smell that mosquitoes love. Gross? Yep. Effective? Also yep. Once it's nice and murky, toss in a mosquito dunk. It's a little donut shaped biological weapon that targets mosquito larvae, but it's safe for pets, birds, and humans. Cover the bucket with some chicken wire or mesh, just enough to let adult mosquitoes in but to keep curious critters or pets out. Then stash your trap in a dappled shape far away from your hangout zone. All right, everybody, so here's our setup. We decided to go with these black buckets from Dollar Tree, mostly because they're a buck, but also because mosquitoes like dark spaces, so the color is going to work out perfectly. Plus, with these handles that they have here, we can hang them if we wanted to. So these traps work so well because they're simple. The organic matter inside, along with the heat and the water, it's going to begin to decompose, producing carbon dioxide. Mosquitoes love carbon dioxide, they are attracted to it. So the mosquitoes are going to fly in, they're going to lay their eggs in the water. Now the water will be laced with BTI, Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a natural larvicide that will kill the larva, thus stopping the reproduction cycle really before it even begins. Now make sure to use mosquito dunks. These are slow release and that's what we want. We don't want to use mosquito bits because those are quick release and they're not gonna work as long. The mosquito life cycle can usually take between eight and 15 days. So we need slow release to ensure the proper concentration throughout that time. That way it will continue to kill during that larval stage, which takes about three to seven days in that span. We added the chicken wire here at the top because it's gonna allow mosquitoes to fly in and fly out but it's gonna stop other critters from getting in and potentially drowning. Now the BTI is not harmful to any other insects, so that's another really good reason why to use it. So let's get on out. We're gonna place these in a couple of shady spots away from the yard and hopefully get those mosquitoes in here to start stopping that uh, process right from the beginning. Alrighty, there you go, we're good to go. Now we'll just check up on them to make sure that they've got water and we'll be in business, the mosquito killing business. We'll keep you updated on how these work out for us. All right, we're gonna be moving on to another mosquito fighting method. This one selected and approved by a popular master gardener, garlic spray. Here's a simple concoction that includes two ingredients that repel mosquitoes and that you may already have on hand, garlic powder and citric acid. Here's another simple but solid mosquito fighting solution, kitchen edition. Grab yourself a half a gallon of warm water, 
and mix in two tablespoons of garlic powder. Yeah, garlic. Turns out mosquitoes hate it, vampires too, probably. Next, add 1.5 teaspoons of citric acid. That's gonna help with preservation and boost the punch. Then to make it stick to surfaces, add one tablespoon of liquid soap. If you've got Castile soap, that's the gold standard. It's natural, plant-based, and super clean. But hey, if Dawn is what you got on hand, that'll do just fine. We're actually using Dawn in this batch. Give it all a good mix, let it sit for about 10 minutes or so so everything blends nicely, and boom, you're ready to spray. Here's an important note, this spray is not for your veggie garden. Don't go blasting your tomatoes or pollinator friendly plants. This one's strictly for hard surfaces or ornamental plants. Think walkways, patio edges, or that decorative grass nobody eats. Funny thing, there's a commercial product out there called Mosquito Barrier, same ingredients, just pricier. So congrats, you basically made your own at home for a fraction of the cost. All right, we got our mixture all set and ready to go. We're gonna head on out and spray it on the walkway around our plant beds where we get bit the most while we're watering or harvesting. Just make sure it's not very windy because the smell can be irritating to your eyes and or your throat. We're gonna spray down some of the section here in the garden bed and get those mosquitoes annoyed and out of here. Well, there you go, everybody. We just finished spraying. We're gonna keep this on hand for a day or so to see if we need to reapply. Hopefully it worked for us and we'll make sure to keep you all posted on how it worked. So now we're gonna move on to our third mosquito killing method. This one involves inviting one of the best natural hunters in the world, dragonflies and damselflies. These flying predators are renowned for their hunting abilities as they have a high success rate of hunting prey. A 2013 study found dragonflies capture approximately 95% of prey released in their enclosure compared to owls, falcons, and hawks who captured just around 25%. Let's give a quick shout out to two of the coolest mosquito hunters in the garden, dragonflies and damselflies. Yeah, they're different species, but they've got a lot in common. Most importantly, they both love eating mosquitoes, like a lot. Here's how to tell them apart. Dragonflies are bigger and when they land, their wings stay spread out horizontally like tiny biplanes. Damselflies, they're a bit daintier and they perch with their wings folded straight up like little fairy swords. Now let's talk appetite. A single adult dragonfly can crush up to 100 mosquitoes a day. That's one bug buffet on wings. And it doesn't stop there. Baby dragonflies, also called nymphs, live in water and munch down around 40 mosquito larvae a day. So yeah, they're getting the job done before they even sprout their wings. Oh, and did I mention, these aerial assassins can fly in all directions, up, down, sideways, backwards, and hit speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. They catch their prey mid-air using their legs or their serrated jaws, like some kind of tiny flying velociraptor. So, if you see a dragonfly buzzing around in your yard, just know they're not here to bother you, they're on patrol. I seriously never learned so much about these beautiful creatures until now. There's so many more cool things about them, we're probably gonna have to dedicate an entire video to them in the future. Now, the things we're gonna need in the garden to create a habitat for our new friends are pretty simple. Dragonflies and damselflies need water to thrive, since that's where they reproduce and spend most of their lives as larvae. But don't worry, you don't need a massive pond, even a small container pond can do the trick. What's important is adding tall water plants around the edges and mixing in other tall plants nearby where they can perch and scout for prey. They also love using garden structures as perches. So things like plant stakes, trellises, fences, or even branching trees all work beautifully. Make sure they've got a balance of sunlight, shade, and cover. That way they can hunt, rest, and hide as needed. If you've got the space, plant a few flat stones near the water so they can warm up in the morning sun and make sure there's some dapple shade where they can cool off during the heat of the day. And the cherry on top, a garden full of diverse flowering plants to bring in all kinds of pollinators. More bugs means more snacks, and that's a win for your resident dragonfly squad. Some great pond edge plants to include are marsh marigold, water mint, blue flag iris, and yellow flag iris. These live right at the water's edge and help create a perfect little buffet zone for nymphs and adults alike. If you've got some shade to work with, throw in lizard's tail or cardinal flower, and they love the damp and keep things looking lush. 
And for the sunny spots, go wild with Black Eyed Susan, Coneflower, Aster, Borage, Yarrow, Coreopsis, Swamp Milkweed, Joe Pieweed, Pickerel Weed, and Cattails. There's a whole dinner party lineup for pollinators and predators alike. Add these to your space and you're basically rolling out the red carpet for natural mosquito control. We will definitely be looking out for some of these dragonfly and damselfly friendly plants when we visit our local garden centers. You can check out a few of our recent garden videos for more inspiration. We'll also be looking for a good container to create a small water feature as well. Man, I'm super thrilled to be trying out some new methods for eliminating mosquitoes from our outdoor spaces. We're gonna make sure to keep you posted on the results. In the meantime, we still need to go around the yard with the seven T's of mosquito control in mind. Mosquitoes can develop in water and stands for more than five days. Use these tips to create a mosquito-free home and yard the seven T's of mosquito prevention. Tip over anything that can hold water, such as toys, dog bowls, plant saucers, vases, or bird baths. Toss or recycle any unwanted yard items that may collect water, such as old tires, junk, or trash. Turn over items that can hold water, like children's pools, wheelbarrows, or buckets. Tighten tarps, items like boats, wood piles, grills, and pools. Take care of your property. Clean out debris from ditches, drains, and gutters. Keep grass cut low and trim or remove overgrown plants and weeds. Treat items that can't be drained or emptied with the appropriate mosquito control products like mosquito dunks. And don't forget the seventh T, team up with your neighbors. Let them know what you can do together to help control the mosquito population in your neighborhood. Don't forget to fight the bite this summer. Dress with long sleeves, pants and socks. Drain any standing water. Defend yourself with natural topical sprays. Make sure to avoid dusk and dawn. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for the quick hang. We really hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope you're able to implement a few of these in your own garden this summer to stay mosquito-free. Make sure to like and subscribe. You know the deal. And we really do appreciate you checking out the video, and we'll see you back here in the next one. Oh, thanks, hon. Ah, cheers. Cheers.